Montana is christened. I'm Brian Moore, and this is Focus NNS. We're here in the communications offices at Newport News Shipbuilding. We're socially distanced from the rest of the team, so we're going to lose the mask for now. But COVID-19 continues to change the way we do things, and that includes christening ceremonies. But we did christen Montana, SSN 794, and we're going to show you how and take you out to the ceremony. Plus, whether under construction or under overhaul, the progress continues on aircraft carriers at Newport News Shipbuilding. And it's been a part of the shipyard landscape for 50 years. We say goodbye to the Green Crane. Those stories and more are coming up, but first on deck, the show must go on, and that's exactly what happened on September 12th, 2020, as we christened Montana. Now, COVID-19 may change the way we are doing things at Newport News Shipbuilding, but it's not going to change the time-honored tradition of christening a submarine. Lena Wallace joins us now with more on this unique ceremony. The health and safety of our shipbuilders continues to come first amid the COVID-19 pandemic, even when it comes to ship christenings. Following COVID-19 prevention guidelines, the christening ceremony of Montana shifted online rather than in person, all to avoid crowds that could potentially spread the social virus. Here's a look behind the scenes of the event and the challenges that came with it. With a break of a bottle, and a break from tradition. The views of the Montana christening ceremony were seen on a screen rather than in person. The shipyard finds many ways to do things, and here we are again, you know, we're getting through a pandemic to bring this event and to still make it special for everyone. Technology has helped us a lot to get through that. Well, I'm a little sad that I'm not able to experience it the way that it's usually experienced, but even through this pandemic, at least I'll be able to see it virtually. Despite the lack of fanfare, the christening site still came to life with the bow flag, American sparkling wine, and historic bell. A replica from the first USS Montana, an armored cruiser built in 1906 at Newport News Shipbuilding, and a gift from the commissioning committee to the crew. Where there'd be chairs. Not having the people there and the excitement, the crew, the folks that helped build the submarine, is a lot different not having them there. For the press, a virtual media day where reporters asked shipbuilders questions online. There's some subtle differences between having media physically on the yard and doing it virtually. We were able to work through a lot of those things. My biggest concern was connectivity, and granted, we had the assistance of our folks in IT that were able to make sure that we had the proper bandwidth to be able to bring it to everyone. Newport News Shipbuilding President Jennifer Boykin stressing how important shipbuilding remains during the COVID-19 pandemic. As shipbuilders, we know the show must go on. Our work doesn't stop for a pandemic, just as the Navy's mission never ends. From miles away in Montana, the ship's maid of honor blessed the boat in her native language. Former Secretary of the Interior and Ships sponsor, Sally Jewell. It's a privilege to serve as sponsor of this even better Virginia-class submarine, what will be the USS Montana. Acknowledging craftsmanship and engineering. As our Navy contractors and shipbuilders continue to employ the newest technology and manufacturing techniques to make our Navy even more capable. The event fully dependent on new technology, just like the star of the show. In the history books, a ship sponsor christening a submarine with a face covering on, a sign of the time. You can re-watch the christening ceremony on our Newport News Shipbuilding website or social media platforms. For Focus NS, I'm Lena Wallace. Back to you, Brian. All right, Lena, thank you so much for that. A great event and a great success. Now, let's take a look at some other news from around the yard. 
from submarine progress to carrier progress. Work at the shipyard hasn't stopped for COVID-19 as builders press on to get these ships across the finish line. First, CVN-80, the Enterprise. Though the official Q-Lang ceremony is not scheduled for more than a year or so, construction of CVN-80 is well underway. The landscape of the North Yard Platten is changing as it houses several large units that will be ready for installation on the carrier. Each unit comes together to construct the next legendary enterprise. The work that we do on a daily basis doesn't look impressive. It comes from very humble and modest beginnings. But to be a part of that and help it take shape and watch as it progresses, it's an awesome thing to be a part of. Newly christened John F. Kennedy, CVN 79 is three quarters of the way complete as work continues on compartment completion. Kennedy was christened December 7, 2019 in a ceremony here at Newport News Shipbuilding. Sponsor Caroline Kennedy was on hand to break the bottle. <laughs> Since then, work has continued and Kennedy currently resides at Pier 3 in the South Yard where teams work to deliver her to the Navy in the next two years. Not to be outdone, overhaul of CVN 73 is progressing. The George Washington is undergoing its complex refueling and overhaul at Newport News Shipbuilding and the carrier is continuing to progress through its final outfitting and testing phase. It's a long sprint. A lot of the things that people don't understand about overhaul is you have pre-existing conditions. You have a lot of stuff that's in your way. Um, you have a lot of wires, a lot of cableways, a lot of pipes and plums that don't get moved. And it's extremely tight in some situations. It's extremely growing. I spend sometimes 12, 13 hours a day in here and I take on that challenge. I don't complain. I know it's for the greater good. I enjoy the work that I do. That makes it even more important. The next major milestone for the ship is Crew Move Award. All right, great job to all of those respective carrier programs. Well, the Green Crane has been standing tall at Newport News Shipbuilding for more than 50 years, but the time has come to say goodbye to this integral part of Newport News Shipbuilding and our skyline. Aaron Pritchett joins us now with more on how this Green Crane is being disassembled. What goes up must come down, but we're not talking about just any old thing as the 5.2 million pound steel structure was once the largest gantry crane of its type in the nation when it was erected back in 1969. And although the 310 long ton Green Goliath gantry crane has served our shipbuilding efforts and most notably the complex refueling and overhaul of everything from the Enterprise CVN-65 to the Nimitz class aircraft carrier fleet well for the last 50 years, extraordinary efforts have been implemented to take down the legendary green giant of Newport News Shipbuilding. I don't want to say the backbone, but one of the backbones to the shipyard is, is a very important crane. It's bittersweet. That old lady there has uh, you know, served her purpose and everything like that. And I learned a lot from working on her and all, you know, that sad to see it go. It's been a very important to this company for that crane years of all the uh, all the ships that it was part of to build. Change is good. I think it's good for the shipyard. Uh, you grow and uh, as you grow, sometimes it requires change. Yeah, I'm going to miss the old girl. been ongoing now for about seven years probably at the most and we started with overhaul of the green crane in 2012 to uh, keep its uh, lifespan until we could replace it um, so this project has been ongoing quite quite a long time it is kind of backwards but we had to get one crane up in service to support the incoming carrier uh, get it qualified and built and then uh, now we had to get the old one removed so we can make room for a new one to have full service of the entire dock. We're working with a company called Syringe USA. They're one of the second largest heavy lift companies in the world. It's been challenging. Every day presents new challenges. We've worked on limited space. We've affected the operation of most every waterfront trade in the shipyard. We've worked with foreign nationals. 
there's been a lot of people involved. It hasn't been just us. Well, the, the concept of taking the crane down is to build uh, the tower sections that you see behind me. Each of these sections uh, were built and bolted um, and torqued to, uh, to keep them in place. They had to do a lot of ground spreading in there. We got a lot of load going to come down in the dry docks in a, in a small area. So they took a lot of time and effort to make sure that we're not going to damage anything. We're going to keep the shipyard property the way it was. But again, we got to build up from the bottom up. So as you can see, it, it's we're almost up there. So today what we are doing is we are trying to prep the Stranjak package, which is a package that contains these Stranjaks plus all the cables. The equipment that we have in both the dry docks, they're identical. Uh, they both contain two Stranjak package with four Stranjaks. So each uh, dry dock has a capacity of 1,800 tons. On dry dock 11, we are already finished. We are just uh, trying to finish this uh, beam so we can move uh, 32,400. And once that's done, then we're going to start both dry dock at the same time with the same equipment. Yeah, so today is the day that we moved our crane the last 50 feet. Uh, it's the last time this crane will be operated. Uh, Final position is where we will begin to jack it up, lift it from the ground, and start cutting it out from underneath. At which point it'll start getting shorter and shorter until the end when we put the girders down to the ground. Once we uh, actually take load of the crane under the strand jacks. We only have one chance to do it, because um, once you start, you can't stop, so we have to keep going along with it. Each piece has to be strategically cut. It has to be relocated within a very small footprint that we're working in. Uh, we got a lot of things going on, a lot of equipment, a lot of moving parts. We've removed the paint, uh, we've been cutting and burning the pieces uh, in the designated locations to be able to lower the crane um, at certain levels at, at the right time. You know, we had to be able to be able to load them down at the same time so the, the crane would stay balanced and the, the center of gravity would stay within the crane. With the removal of the old green crane, it does make way for the new crane, but yes, the old green crane, it does have a lot of history to it. And it is uh, pretty nostalgic to see the pieces of it go, go away. It's, it's great to be a part of this project team um, to uh, take this crane down, but it was also great and rewarding to be part of the project team to build the new crane that's going to replace it. And now that we're, you know, finally starting to cut them and move them down. It, it's like I said, it is bittersweet, but it's also very rewarding to see that all the pre-planning and all the planning up front has, uh, has finally come into fruition. As work continues on this site over the next several weeks to remove the remaining sections of the Green Goliath gantry crane via transporters and eventually onto barges for salvage, Newport News Shipbuilding will then switch gears and prepare dry docks 10 and 11 for the arrival of the next Nimitz-class aircraft carrier John C. Stennis CVN-74, which will begin its complex refueling and overhaul in early 2021 and the beginning of the next chapter for the new 315 metric ton Blue Goliath Gantry Crane, which came into service last fall. For Focus NNS, I'm Aaron Pritchett. Back to you, Brian. All right, thank you, Aaron. The end of an era. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Focus NNS. Thank you so much for being here. Remember, the 411 COVID-19 website for all the latest information and how you can control the spread of COVID-19. And for the latest shipyard news, check out our weekly publication, Currents, and download our free app, nns to go It's available in the Google and Apple stores on your smartphones and tablets. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Brian Moore.